Hello Corkies, welcome back. We got a best wine under $20 review today, but it's also a champagne. Because guess what? New Year's Eve's coming up. So you gotta be popping some bottles. Am I right? You're right. We're, we're gonna teach you all about champagne. Coming up. Hello everybody, welcome to Cork and Java, your go-to place for wine and coffee, reviews, and how-tos. On this channel, we like to enlighten and enrich your experience with all your favorite beverages. So if that sounds interesting to you, and you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button below so you're notified when future videos come out. So we got champagne here, we're going to teach you all about champagne. Actually, this isn't champagne, it's sparkling wine, because it doesn't come from Champagne, France. <laughs> anyway, with the new year coming up, I know you're going to be popping some bottles. So I'm going to teach you a little bit about uh, what to expect uh, when you're at the store and uh, really give you some knowledge on uh, how champagne's made and uh, really just general information about it. So what is this particular champagne wine? So this bottle is, like he said, sparkling wine. It's from the Gruet Winery, which is actually out in New Mexico, um, in Albuquerque, and they also have a tasting room in Santa Fe. And um, this one is Brut um, sparkling wine, so I'm sure Billy will get into more detail about the different kinds of champagne or sparkling wine. Um, yeah, let's go over that. Uh, okay. So there's different dryness levels of champagne, um, ranging from completely dry to very sweet. And uh, so the classification goes, extra brut is the most dry that uh, there is out there. There's not gonna be any sugar residual in it at all. Then it goes to brut, which also can be completely z no residual sugar, but there could be a little bit of lingering sugar in there. It's the next level up uh, as far as sweetness. Then what do we got after that? Um, after that was... Extra dry? Yes, extra dry. And then we had um, sec mm -hmm. and semi-sec and rounding it out with dough. So there's it's, six options. Yeah. Or do. Is it it's do. Do. <laughs> anyway, so now I'm going to teach you how to open champagne because, you know, a lot of people get it wrong and it's very dangerous if you're not doing it correctly. So first off, you get this foil wrapper off. And while he's um, taking off this wrapper, I just wanted to say that this uh, particular bottle here is the first sparkling wine that this winery produced in 1989. So it is like a perfect 30 year vintage. It's the 30th year of them making this uh, sparkling wine. So it's a perfect way to ring in 2019 with the 30 year. Yep solid sparkling wine. Also be careful with these uh, sparkling wines and champagnes in your fridge because especially the lower end ones they can be not so great as far as how they contain the cork and when the wine can, gets cold it can actually explode in your fridge so just be careful with some of the lower end ones. Don't get it too cold, don't put it in the freezer and you should be good to go. All right. So, the first thing is, there's a cage on top, and there's always, do you remember how many twists? Six. Six twists. One, two, three, oh, five, five six. six. Oh yeah. The next, you want to take a towel, or something similar, and uh, drape it over the cork like that. Then, you want to kind of grasp it, like this, and slowly twist and slowly let the pressure relieve out. And if you do it right, it won't even pop. It'll just, oh, that popped. So if you do it r really well, it will um, just pssst, yeah. like hiss basically out. But I pulled it out a little bit fast. So that's that. And perfectly contained and safe in the towel. You're not shooting it across the room into someone's eye. <laughs> So you notice how bubbly champagne is and sparkling wine, and that's what we love about it. 
And you might be wondering, how does uh, champagne and sparkling wine get all those bubbles? Well, the traditional method is actually in secondary fermentation. So they bottle the wine before all the yeast is finished converting all the um, sugars to alcohol. And the byproducts of yeast eating sugar is alcohol, of course, but also carbon dioxide. Normally that CO2 is released in the brewing process, but when it's contained in the bottle, the CO2 has nowhere to go and it creates that carbonation. So that's the traditional method. Let's take a look at the color. Sure. Very pale. Yep, pale, kind of like a, a golden, uh, nice bubbles, of course. Right. And you're gonna wanna have a tall glass with your champagne. And that's really so the bubbles have a longer distance to go. Mm -hmm. And that's the reasoning behind the shape of uh, the flu, as they say. The flute. Flute, mm -hmm. yes. All right, let's give it a sniffy sniff. All right. Ooh, I get apple and... Yeah, very crisp smelling. Yep. And maybe slightly minerally. Yep. Man, I got some confetti in mine. <laughs> That'll put hair on your chest. It smells good though. Yeah. I get predominantly nice. apple, kind of like yep. an apple juice kind of. Yeah. I would agree. And it's probably not going to be sweet. Probably going to, it's probably just the uh, essence of sweetness that we're kind of getting on the nose. So let's give it a taste. Okay. Definitely has a little bit of residual sugar in it. Yeah. It's not good. it's not bone dry as uh, an extra, extra brute brut, would yeah. be. But I'm surprised this is still classified as brute because I would say there's like one or one or two percent probably residual sugar still in this. Very crisp. Um, still getting a lot of that apple. That's like the predominant. Yeah flavor coming through it's almost hard to pick up anything else i would say yeah apples and pears those are mm -hmm. the two like yep really maybe more fruits maybe some stone fruit um but other than that that's i mean it's just an apple bomb yeah very tart very dry all right shall we do a pairing for this yes all right our surprise pairing and i've uh read online this week uh about this pairing which made me want to really try it it is French fries. No cheese or anything on it, just pure salty French fries. One of my faves. Yep. The crispness with the wine should pair well, I think, with the, the fattiness of this. Everything pairs with French fries in my book. <laughs> oh yeah. That salt That's with the, the, the crispness of that and kind of the fattiness of uh, the oils and the fries. Just the crispness and the crispness <laughs> just go well together. It's a match made in heaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, french fries and champagne, excellent choice. Mm -hmm. All right, let's rate this wine. I like it. Um, okay, this is really good. I don't have a ton of experience drinking actual champagne. I usually only have sparkling wines for you know special occasions like weddings and holidays, but um, I think this is really good. So I would give this a solid 90. I was going to give this an 88 because it is good, but I really like them to be a little bit on the drier side. And I was kind of disappointed that this is uh, as sweet as it is for a, a, a brute. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for us. Please leave a comment down below with what your favorite champagne or sparkling wine is. We'd like to know, especially with uh, the holidays coming up. Uh, we'd like to know so leave a comment down below also come to our new website corkandjava.com where you can get all of our video blogs and uh, just a great place where it's conveniently organized we're also on Facebook so find us there Cork and Java we got a Twitter at Cork Java and a Pinterest page which is pinterest.com slash Cork and Java looking forward to seeing you guys online and a happy new year, guys. Happy new year.